Us racing fans love our motorsport merch, whether that's through a team cap or a mini helmet. And the other week I was looking around for some goodies and I found that Pretty actually sell miniature versions of the Formula One tire. They sell it in a variety of different compounds and in this scenario it's crafted for fans, but in its original form was for teams who are doing testing in wind tunnels. Plus it's the same miniature which gets awarded to whomever scores the pole position at the races. So naturally I got really excited, I mean who wouldn't want a Formula One miniature tire in their own office? But then I saw the price tag and it was being sold for £700. Which part of me can understand the price point, you know, this is such a bespoke piece of memorabilia, it's made out of stainless steel and Pirelli's own rubber compound. But then it also breaks my heart because I know so many Formula 1 fans would love to have this in their home. Which brings us to the reason as to why you clicked onto this video. I'm going to try to recreate this product at home for much cheaper. Now for this my budget is going to be £150 which to be fair is still quite a lot of money but I'm hoping to not spend as much, that's going to be my, my max cutoff. So if there's any places I can cut corners I'm definitely going to be doing that. And just like my podium robot video this isn't a tutorial as such but rather showing the process I'm doing so apologies in advance if it's not perfect. <laughs> So first up, we actually need the tyre itself because that will dictate the sizes for the rim and also the graphics we're going to have. So I went onto eBay and got a slick rear go-kart tyre for £20 and removed any painted graphics simply by using nail polish remover. So that was fairly easy, but now we're going to go onto the rim itself, which is a bit more tricky. So we could always machine this out of stainless steel, but that's quite expensive and I've got no experience in doing that. So what we're going to do instead is actually 3D print the rim. We're going to sand it down and spray paint it so it looks like stainless steel. So I got hold of this 3D Formula 1 wheel, which as you can see has the rubber compound with the wheel's nut and air valve. And for this, as we're just wanting the rim itself, we needed to remove all those extra bits. So I used this great free website called Vectory, where you could upload or create 3D models from scratch, make modifications to them and export them out to print. So I imported the 3D model and could easily remove the rubber and the nut, but as you can see it left a hole in the rim where the air valve originally was. So I used the edit tool to fill in the extra areas, leaving the rim without any weird gaps. After taking measurements from the go-kart tire, I could then change the 3D object scaling in length, height and depth in order to slot perfectly within the tire. I then exported it as an STL file which could be uploaded to a 3D printing shop and after getting a few quotes I went to 3D hubs using prototype ABS filament which came to nice £2.32. Now because we're getting the rim 3D printed, we obviously can't use condensed air to hold it in place you know, between that and the tire, otherwise the air pressure would just make the 3D model explode. So to keep the rim in place, we're going to be using expanding foam. Going to let it dry and become hard and then hollow out the inside with a knife. And I brought this can of expanding foam for about £10 and hopefully it's enough to fill the inside. So it's the morning after and the expanding foam literally did its job, which I think I kind of forgot that it's going to actually expand. So I'm now going to take off all the tape that was trying to hold all the foam in and then actually start to cut off some of the excess. Okay, so this just arrived and I believe this is our 3D print. Really excited to actually see what it looks like and hopefully it's the right size. <laughs> Oh, that looks so good! We do have like these little banding lines going all around, but I mean like, that's just remnants of it being 3D printed, but with filler and sanding it down, I think I can get this to a really good spot. So that's so cool! This is so cool! Also, the walls are like nice and thick as well, so like even if you were to like sort of push down it with, with some force, it still holds structure, because it mean, I mean, it's still a wheel rim. So, um, oh, this is so good. Wait, let me go get the tire real quick. That actually fits perfectly. Okay, so that's now the inside hollowed out. Um, there's quite a lot of foam that did come out of it. It's, it's gone all sort of hard and crunchy. It's not like soft foam you get on like mats or anything like that. Um, there is some air pockets that are on the inside. Um, I'm not too worried about that. As long as there's enough contact area for the outside of the rim to stick to, then I'm more happy. So speaking of that, I want to grab the rim and see if it does actually fit now. So it fits and I'm really happy with it. I actually think it looks really, really decent. I mean, I haven't even done the spray job onto it yet. So towards the back, here you can actually see there's a bit of a white edge going around and it's literally like three centimeters or so and so I think what I'll do is once I take the rim out I'll spray paint the inside of this uh, black so you won't actually see the uh, foam itself it'll kind of just blend in with the tire. Luckily I already had some black spray paint which I could use for the job as well as some primer which we're going to be needing for the 3D printed rim. Now when you get 3D printed parts done it does it in layers and it sometimes leaves little gaps and little printing lines and so a way to smooth it out is to firstly use some sandpaper then cover it in primer then sand it down again and then cover again in primer 
primer. So what you're trying to do is use the primer to fill in those little gaps between the 3D printed lines so that it's nice and smooth. Plus then it's ready for painting. Next up I added metallic spray paint which costs £11 and I gave this a couple coats to try and make it as shiny as possible. For the painted graphic to show the Pirelli logo and its colours I decided to go with the red compound you know to match in with the go-kart tyre but to get the design on the actual tyre itself I first needed to recreate this from a reference photo so then I could print this out to help with painting. So I grabbed a photo online and modified the logos and scaled it to my tyre's dimensions to give me design to work with. Now one way I could have done is printed this out onto vinyl so we would have had a stickable stencil to go onto the tyre. However, loads of printing shops near me are currently closed due to lockdown and I don't think we've got that much left in the budget to actually pay for it. So what we're going to do instead is actually cover it in masking tape or painter's tape and then print the design across two A4 pieces of paper and cut up the logos and graphics leaving me with a stencil. So that's one side now fully taped up so we're going to layer the stencil on top of it, use a pen to go all around the design and draw onto the tape and effectively the exact same on the other side. Once left with the drawn on graphics, I could then cut those out trying to be as precise as possible to use for painting. So I've cut out all the stencils and we're gonna first do a layer of primer and then we're gonna spray paint it red. Now I've covered the rest of it in tape and recycled paper and after it's dried, we can peel this off, put the rim inside and we're done. And so there you have it, my very own DIY Formula One miniature tire. Now, is this perfect? No, definitely not. But I'm really happy with it. It's exactly how I imagined it in my head. And if I was to do this a second time, there would be some areas I would improve on. So starting off with the rim, as you can see around the sides, you've still got some banding and that's kind of due to the 3D model. But there's also a different method that you can do to smoothen out your 3D prints. And one of those is using acetone, where the alcohol vapor effectively melts down the outside of the plastic. I didn't really want to risk it with this just because it did cost 92 pounds so I think if I was to do it a second time I might try out that method and the second thing I would change is the paint job itself as you can see firstly the red isn't as bright as I would like it to have been so I think that's just a different paint color I need to get uh, also the edges aren't super clean so although I did use masking tape and painters tape to try and get really clean edges naturally when you do loads of coats of primer and paint you are going to start to get a little bit like almost like a film like texture to it so i think i might try out the vinyl wrap next time like i mentioned earlier in the video but overall i think from afar it actually looks really good it's only when you're close up you actually start to see some of the details but I'm really happy with this, but let me know down in the comments what you think. Now, although this wasn't a tutorial as such, I'm sure some of you would love to have the stencil and the 3D rim. So what I've done is I've left them as download links in the description below to use in your own projects. But just one thing to bear in mind that all of this was scaled down for this specific tire. So when you get your tire, make sure you get all the dimensions, make sure everything's all scaled up correctly to so make sure it all fits in. But that's it for this video and I really hope you enjoyed watching this. If you did, then make sure to click the like button down below. And if you want to see some more DIY Formula 1 videos, then make sure to click the video over there over on the left hand side. And if you're new, here then make sure to hit subscribe but thanks very much for watching and i'll see you next time